That last minute, 45 seconds, it was a group of young men for the first time ever that came together like a family and decided that they weren't gonna go down without a fight. And all I've been trying to get you guys to do for the last five years that I've been at this school is to get you to put your hands up and fight. I believe in every single one of you guys in this jersey, we will be okay. But it all depends tomorrow when that bus leaves at 3.30, who shows up. I'm 0-38 as a coach at this school. You think it doesn't hurt? You think I don't lose sleep at night? Because this matters so much to me that you walk out of here with a win. If you care, stand up and get your hand in here. We play ball one more time. Family on three. One, two, three. Family! Lacrosse at Christo Ray Jesuit High School leads the way in the development of our, our whole athletic program. When I arrived here at Crystal Ray, I was fresh off of retirement from Major League Lacrosse and, and was ready for a little time out from the sport. Uh, Darius Sanders at the time was a sophomore and had played a little bit of lacrosse here in the city, uh, maybe for a year or two. And he kind of questioned me about a little bit of my lacrosse background. I said I'd played and I'm, I don't play anymore. And, I'm a coach, but I don't coach anymore. And, and it kind of turned into, well, if we get a few sticks, do you think you can meet us at the park? That first fall I was here in 2008 was just something for fun. I didn't, I didn't picture what it was gonna take to create the program and what it was gonna take to get a schedule. I guess what I'm trying to say is I didn't know what I was getting myself into. I brought you in to give you a quick reminder that this season is huge for me and for you. And I say it's big for me because I do not want these seniors to go out without a win. All right. John Gataka, 18, senior, midfield faceoff. I was like, lacrosse? I was like, how do you even play that? <laughs> I was like, I don't know. We're going to find out. My name is Kent Davis, Jr. I'm 18 years old. I'm in the 12th grade, and I play attack. And then I started saying them. I'm like, what's that? They're like, lacrosse. And I was like, what's lacrosse? My name is Corey Harrison, Jr. I'm a sophomore. I'm 16, and I play midfield for the lacrosse team. I heard about lacrosse. When I came to Crystal Ray, I did. I have never touched a lacrosse stick before I came here. I have never heard of lacrosse. It was like a new world for me. My name is Shamal Hawks. I'm 15. I'm a 10th grader, and I'm the goalie for Crystal Ray Jesuit High School. I knew that we haven't won a game yet. I knew that everybody like doubted us. I mean, that nobody ever thought that we was going to win a game. My name is Elijah Miles. I'm 17 years old. I'm a senior in high school, and I'm a midfielder. I was pretty used to it. I went to St. Ignatius and I didn't win a game in St. Ignatius like all my years. Actually, the next year after I left and my nephew Winfield, he, uh, he won, they won like five, six games the next year, but I never won a lacrosse game. My name is Winfield Hopkins. I am 17. I am a junior at Crystal Ray and I am a midfielder. I heard about lacrosse first in my sixth grade year at St. Ignatius Leola Academy. Um, my uncle Elijah, he went there and he had played lacrosse and he got me interested. He was like, this is a fun sport. And I always followed in his footsteps whenever I saw something interesting. So I started playing lacrosse and I just grown to like it. Hello, my name is Tyrell Womack. I'm 18, I'm a senior, ready to graduate, and I play midfield and attack. To be on the Hornets team, it was it's a struggle. But it's not a struggle that's not worth it. Because if you put your heart into it, you put your heart, mind, and soul into it, I mean, you're going to get what you deserve. Crystal Ray is a, is a college prep school, so that really helps prepare us for the next level. Of course, everyone knows academics come first, but they do cherish every other aspect of like Crystal Ray and what we find interesting, whether it's the art, the music department, they all care about it and they put their full effort into supporting it. What's unique about Crystal Ray? It's a lot. If I can write that down, it'd be like a novel or something. Crystal Ray Jesuit High School is one of 25 schools around the country that form part of the Crystal Ray Network. We are a unique school in the sense that we have a high-powered education program, but we also have a work program. We have more than 90 companies uh, around Baltimore that actively partner with us and hire our students. This has an absolutely transformative effect in our young people. The internship, it gives you a great background and it gives you the opportunity to put that on your actual resume. At my job, I work at Gallagher Valley and Jones. It's a, a law firm. I won a corporate internship program award. That's for doing a great job at your CIP job.
We have the Jesuit term cura personalis, which is educating, you know, mind, body, and spirit. And so, you know, athletically, physically, you know, being able to release and, and grow in that way, you know, it's a big piece of the puzzle to educating the whole person and getting a lot of different diverse experiences. There's a fun new challenge having been at previous schools where lacrosse was well established, there was beautiful turf fields, everything was there at our fingertips and with this it was a challenge. Uh, everything from getting the equipment to finding the players to finding a field. With donation from um, the U.S. Lacrosse Foundation of sticks and helmets and gloves and so on, it was, uh, that was, I would say, year three would mark the, the beginning. Now let's push it down and see what we can do. <laughs> yeah! Game time. Although 0-9 uh, was a big success for us because we at least had some momentum going into year four because I knew that we were going to be an MIAA team by year four and that, that scared me a little bit. The MIAA is uh, described by itself as the premier athletic conference in the country. I think that them putting us in this conference gives us like a lot more respect. It shows that they respect us because we already challenged academically so why not challenge us sports-wise. The teams we were playing were, it, to me, seemed like ridiculously nice. Like they were catching everything, passing left-handed, shooting left-handed. My first year, like I, I really didn't know about you know the history, lacrosse, lacrosse's history at Crystal Rink. So, you know, I thought the 0-14 season was, you know, not normal. So I, I just said, you know, brush it off. Year five, with about 25 kids rolling into the season, I thought this is the team that could win it, and that's that's really our our focus for the season. Let's win one. As the season began, I circled a couple games on the calendar, um, Beth to Philo and, and Mount, uh, Mount Carmel and Baltimore Lutheran and a few others. Not because I didn't think they were good teams, but I knew from past history that those are the teams that we could and should compete with. We show up for Beth to Philo and we lose 10 to 5 and the boys would attest to they didn't play hard enough. Key school, same thing, it was 10 to 2. And you know, I, I start to lose a little bit of that, that emotion that I had and that, that positive energy because those are teams we should have beaten. And in the back of my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to fight the thought off, but I think I'm not sure if these guys are going to pull this off. Not because we're not good enough, but because I was fearful that they were accustomed to losing. And they didn't know how to be on the other side of it. Certain teams would just kill us from the beginning. There would be some teams we always start off good at the first quarter. Once they get that lead on us, we never got a chance to recover from it. And then we actually started scoring on teams. And we were like, whoa, wait a minute. Like shot with Phil! And other teams were looking like, why are they so happy? Because we were scoring and everybody's like, yeah! Jumping all over the place. We're not a team who scores, we're not a team who wins, so this is a big thing to us. When we play teams like Gastel, last year we would lose to them by like 20. Coming this year, we actually scored a, a few points that game, and it was like that confidence booster. And then of course we had them games that we said to each other, we can win this, and we would go out, try our hardest, and put a good effort in. For example, like the Mount Carmel game. Coach texted me and was like, you got to start goalie. And it was just like that. And then, and then I called my mother at that moment, like, well, we got this Mount Carmel game coming up, and it's a game that we possibly can win. So it's hard for me to take on that responsibility. Six, seven, big day eight, for you, big nine, boy. Ten. You're going to be great today. We played at Utz Field, and we had a pretty good crowd considering our normal crowd for sporting events. And so there was a great presence, and there was a sense around the school and the community that you know, this could be the day that it's going to happen. And uh, I could see a little extra bounce in the uh, student athlete's step that day. It was a big game, that Mount Carmel game. We hadn't played them yet, but I had looked at their schedule and I knew, you know, based on their scores, that we were on par with them. And I said, this has got to be our first win. They thought that once the score was in their favor that they can kind of coast, and we don't have that kind of um, depth to do that. And all of a sudden, um, in the fourth quarter, it's nine to six. And we were like, wait a minute, whoa. What's going on? We were just winning. How did they come back? You know, I was 0-35 at that time as a coach. I thought, God, we never scored three goals in 90 seconds. Sometimes we don't score three goals in practice. Kalen 
All we're going to do with that warmest pick and not move windshield, you're going to use that pick and rip it right handed. So it was nerve wracking thinking, what if I miss and then I just like kill the hopes of my team? Especially when it was going into that last second when they was like, Winfield, we're going to need you to take this final shot. And I was telling myself in the beginning, I'm not going to make this shot. So they gave me the ball. I got an awesome pick from one of my teammates, awesome screen, and I just went for the shot, made the shot, and took the team in the overtime. That was just, that was amazing for us. I didn't think it was possible, but anything's possible. Yeah. And we was like, oh my gosh, our first overtime. Four minutes, first team to score wins. Let's do this. Let's do this. Here we go. Hornets on three. One, two, three. Hornets! And it's like, we need to win this face off. I lost the draw, and instead of uh, fighting to get the ball back, I argued with the ref. Then I turned around, and all I saw was them, like the more calmly jumping and laughing. And then it hit me, I was like, wow, it was on me. This was my last stand, like, I was supposed to be the person to stop that. And that was only my second game at Golden, and we lost the overtime. At that moment, it was like all my emotions just came out. I hadn't cried in my whole high school career for anything. I didn't cry for grades, I didn't cry for when I didn't win awards, nothing. But that hit me hard. Like, that made me realize why people, like, cry on ESPN and stuff. I'm like, what you crying for? It's just a game. It's like, but when you know you're supposed to win it and it's on you, it hurts so much. So I was just there crying, trying to apologize to everybody. Like, man, it's on me. You gotta get these goals off. That's how we lose, son. In those type games, you would think that the first urge is the point who fault it was that we lost, but no one really had the urge to point the finger at who, who fault it was. We was just all sad that it ended like that. You guys, that last minute, 45 seconds, it was a group of young men for the first time ever that came together like a family and decided that they weren't going to go down without a fight. And all I've been trying to get you guys to do for the last five years that I've been at this school is to get you to put your hands up and fight. I could sit here and say we did this wrong and that wrong and that wrong, but think about the things that we did right and understand the mistakes that you made and what we can fix the next time around. We will play these gentlemen again one more time this season. Remember how you feel. Don't quit. Don't quit. When this is over, you take care of each other. When this is over, you grab your gear, you walk back to that school with some pride. You fought like no team I've ever coached in five years. If you care, stand up and get your hand in here. Family on three. One, two, three. Family! And everybody was pretty shell-shocked. The kids were devastated, you know. The next morning, I come in and a message had been forwarded to me through voicemail from uh, the referee. And it was beautiful what he said. I was, um, I'm getting choked up a little bit. I just wanted you to know what a privilege it was to watch those boys play across the way they played. The kids played hard. They played clean. They played tough. I was given the opportunity after the game to say to the boys that exact same message I'm giving you. What an honest to God privilege. I'm breaking up because you guys are awesome. Awesome. Be proud of yourselves. You did a great job out there. I'm just proud and glad to be a part of it. You must have really left an impact on all of us. In between that final game with Mount Carmel, we had to play the top teams in the league. There was no easy ones. And so I thought, man, we have to make it through the next five weeks until we see these guys again. And we're talking about St. John's was 20 to nothing. And we were talking about Gerstel, which was uh, 16 to four, and, and Baltimore Lutheran about 12, 12 to five. A week from today at, you know, 545 like it is right now, uh, where you want to be. So you seniors, figure this thing out and how we want to end this thing. What's going to happen next Friday at Mount Carmel when we have this final timeout? Where are we going to be? One week from today, is it our first victory or are we just rolling right through the season with another loss? Figure it out. Here we go. Ray Ra Lutheran. One, two, three. Ray Ra Lutheran. The locker room at Cristo Ray is a literally an industrial freight locker. Alex Madrano, freshman. Uh, on the team comes and says, you know, Mr. Noto, the lock is broken. Two and a half hours before the game is supposed to start, we finally get into our box. 
All right, who else needs gear? Let me when we look at game days, it's always a challenge. The uniqueness of the CIP program is that students are at work. Our leading scorer and our captain, Winfield Hopkins, was uh, working at a hospital uh, out in Reisterstown. So we had to arrange somehow to get our leading score to a game that we needed to win. And last time we played them, we lost uh, 10 to 9. Uh, Winfield scored seven goals. Elijah Miles was coming from a retreat. They weren't sure if he was going to make it on time. This is our second leading scorer. These are like the building blocks. These are you know, the beginning war stories, if you will, that you're going to tell your kids and your grandkids about what I did to start and you know, help put the foundation under the Crystal Ray Lacrosse program. Most of the time, we go, in, we go in the games laughing and giggling, and the bus ride there was so, like, you could just feel the intensity on the bus. It's our last game. It was like our hearts was racing. People was like, like, they didn't say nothing. They just made weird noises. <laughs> like, they, they was kind of, like, junky. The game was just as I expected. It was a battle, goal for goal the entire game. <laughs> new kid, Alex Medrano, uh, who's brand new to lacrosse but hustles his, his butt off when he's on the field, scoops up a loose ball at midfield and he looks and sees that the goal is open. This is a kid that barely knows the rules of lacrosse, but he has the instinct to heave the ball towards the goal and all of a sudden it goes in. I don't even know how he did it. The goalie was out of the goal. He just threw it. And we were like, who are you throwing the What? And they went in and we was like, oh my gosh, he just scored. <laughs> the first half was like a make you or break you type thing. And we was like, we need to make sure we keep this game close. If we can't get a lead on it, we need to make sure we keep it close. Because when Winfield gets hit, we're really going to like, really dig in there. Actually, I had just got off of work, my CIP job. So I ended up coming at halftime. And I was already sick throughout the whole day. Are you in, are you in real rough shape? That's bad. Like what? Like flu and stuff? I ain't eating nothing all day. Next time I drink, I just pay right out. You don't, you can't eat food. I ain't eating nothing. Um, can you handle playing attack? Yeah. All right, just hang down there. If you need a break, come on out. But, but when uh, Winfield came in at the second half, and he was sick, I was like, I can't put that pressure on him. I love the excitement. We're picking up loose balls. We're selling down. Everybody needs to take part in this game right now, so we can get a win. It's right now or never. It was as dramatic as you get. It was a tie game. Our goalie scooped up a loose ball. He went back to throw it. And it fell out. We were like, what's wrong with his stick? And it like just dropped straight out. And so when it dropped straight out, I like turned around, everybody's like the ball out. And it rolled straight into the goal. At that moment, I was like, you know, this is my mistake. This is my goal. His stick was broke, like the net separated from the actual head. And we was like, oh my gosh, we just scored for them. All right, just grab another one. We got to back up. We start going neck and neck with each other. Like, we were scored, they were scored. We were scored, they were scored. We were scored, they were scored. We was like, what is wrong? Why can we not stop them from scoring? We get down to it with about a minute left. We've got a chance to take the lead before it's over. I've got two timeouts left. Winfield, you're going to dodge right off this double pick, run him right off of it. You're going to get a righty shot. You're going to be wide open, finish it, and we're going to be up by one. All right? That's it. Here we go. Offense on three. One, two, three. Offense. I thought this is going to be it. You know, we have the ball. Matt's got it. Winfield's ready to go. Run a play, miss the goal, we get the ball back. Tough ground ball by Alex Medrano. We pick it up, call a timeout. So Winfield, you're gonna dodge from that same spot. After that pick, Elijah, just turn and Winfield step. If it's there, shoot it. If not, right back to Elijah. And Elijah, you got a shot. Just relax, catch it, and shoot it. Same play again. We got 26 seconds left. All right, here we go, get out there. Run a different play. On that one, the goalie made a save, and I thought, gosh, we're going to overtime again. We was here before, like this. I'm not really excited about it. I was more, I was really nervous when we went to overtime. So 
So overtime begins, our faceoff happens, and we run down the field, run a great play, get a shot on goal, goalie makes a save. I thought that might have been our chance. It's, it's like the thing where if you allow a team to get on offense, it's just you start instantly thinking they're going to score. When he first shot it, I dropped my stick like, no, not again. And then when it was like, can't pick up your stick, he hit it out. Ball rolls down the other way, they get a fast break. As he was coming down, I remember all my techniques. I lined up with him, and I can remember the goal coach was saying, look at where his stick on at. And our goalie makes a great kick save uh, to keep us alive. And that's when we look back up, and he was about to shoot it again. And I'm like, oh my gosh, no, 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 no. And everybody's just yelling, Shamar, Shamar. It was one on one, and Shamar won the individual battle. Sophomore, who wasn't the starter at the beginning of the season, you know, making the, the save at the most critical time of the game. And the goalie threw the ball my way, and it bounced, and I picked it up. Catch it with your body. The first thing that came to my mind was sprint. Don't jog, just sprint. Tyrell was just coming down. I was like, he might pass it, he might pass it. I was like, Tyrell's not going to pass it. This is a kid who hadn't scored a goal all season long. I backed out, and the next thing I heard was the ball hit the pole. I honestly thought I missed it. But when I seen the back of the net move, I was like, whoa. <laughs> Jubilation. You know, is the only word I can use to describe the scene on the field. Um, you know, Matt gets the, the, the water cooler dump, and, you know, the seniors are throwing their gloves up in the air, and, you know, Kent Davis is down on one knee just in tears. I just launched my stick up in the air, and I ran over to Tyrell. We were just happy, like, I almost cried. When the goal first went, I was, like, shocked, like, I didn't know what to do. And I looked over, and I could see Coach, like, face just, like, there's never been a joy on his face like that. And I see my teammates just so happy. That moment when he ran towards me, and he was holding me. I was ready for him, but I didn't tell him that. But I never been a part of a team in that important role like that. It was a good feeling to know that we won a lacrosse game. And then we made Crystal Ray history. To know that I played part of a team that made Crystal Ray history. And it was just like a dream come true. Everybody was happy too, especially like I was saying, it was, that was just one of the happiest moments for him. And that just made me happy seeing the rest of my team happy. And when we won, it was like, it was like I wanted to cry, like tears of joy, and we was all like happy and like together, and it was like really like a family. I kind of felt bad for the other team because they was like, uh, they were sad, and I know how that feels too. Got our first win, done. My whole uh, career of playing lacrosse, I, I we never won, so it was like, ah, <laughs> it was just. It was just a sigh of relief more than like for me, more than uh yeah, 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 yeah. It was just like so it was just like a calm, like like understanding, like kind of like an enlightenment. What was so so beautiful about our kids celebrating was that they hadn't had a chance to do it before. And I think it was so natural to see them run towards each other, hug each other. Um, you know, Tyrell, who scores a winning goal, the first win in my career and his career, and everybody on that sideline, um, it gives me a big hug. And, you know, I, I told him how proud I was of him and, and uh, how that goal was something that we'll, none of us will ever forget. Way to go, buddy. I'm proud of you. Huge, huge. Biggest goal in Crystal Ray history. Way to go, man. That was huge. Big win. Big win. Although it seems like a little little game, two C conference teams, a tiny little field in Essex, um, that was to me was the world title, and it was huge. And I think to the boys, it was the same thing. That was the game that mattered to us. Hey, Greg, All work pays off. That's all you gotta say. All work pays off. I mean, we pulled through it for a long time, four years, first win, and I'm proud of it. I get to graduate with at least one win in my high school career. The lessons of loyalty, teamwork and commitment are enshrined in our lacrosse program. Lacrosse taught me the teamwork aspect of life. It's not only about you, no matter how talented you are, it's always about the people around you and making sure they prosper along with you. Otherwise, you're gonna stay on, on the losing streak. Loyalty especially, because we know that like, if something happens to one of our players, we run over there, we make sure they're okay, we go pick them up, we like encourage our teammates to do better. So this type of thing, it helps like think about life, that these are all like important morals that we should take with us as we go home and deal with our community. Lacrosse taught me one lesson, 
not to dwell on the past. You know, I was struggling with losses, but I came to a realization that I dwell on that when we won that last game. I see that all the hard work and all the losses was poured out in that one moment when we won. It helps you be open-minded and open to growth. So it's like when you're thinking just on your own, and then you hear other opinions, and you, you can put everything together and come to a conclusion. I think I enjoy being the underdog, like on a team where we don't win as much, because then I have a lot to fight for. Just because we don't win every game doesn't mean it's not hard work put into every game that we play. So it's not about a win all the time. It's about what you get out of it mentally. If you lose, you learn from those mistakes. I enjoy working with Mr. Hanna. Like, we had our ups and downs. He would always hate when I jogged. And that game, it's just like, I'm, I'm through with jogging. I will sprint all the way up that field if it takes for me to do what I have to do. That's really what we were looking for the whole season, from the beginning to the end. And the end, we did what we came to do, win the game.